What about teaching weather as a practical matter? How could CFIs make weather real to their students rather than something from an annoying textbook or words that are abstract like wet pseudo adiabatic lapse rate? During the student's primary training, their flight instructors generally do a good job of helping them identify the weather in which it's safe to fly. But that doesn't mean that the instructor can't or shouldn't give their students exposure to weather conditions that are less than ideal as long as it's safe to do so, of course. For instance, nearly all my primary students had some exposure to actual cloud conditions. Of course, where I come from, we have a lot of low stratus clouds, so it's easy to give a student experience in actual conditions. Now, that's not necessarily the case in Phoenix, Arizona. In that case, you just have to do the best with what you have. I also make a deal with my graduating primary students that they could call me anytime they desire to experience weather that was different from that in which they trained. Then there are those occasions when the weather simply isn't conducive to building traditional cross-country flight time, the kind of time that's necessary to meet the requirements for the private pilot certificate. However, these same weather conditions are indeed conducive to exploring the limits and the problems of flying in inclement weather. Now I've taken students flying with their permission of course and that's very important. When the winds were exceptionally gusty or when the ceilings were lower than normal or even when the visibility was lower than normal but still legal of course and certainly not practical for a traditional cross-country flight. When students actually see how limiting some of these conditions are it's a real eye-opener for them. Of course Flight instructors can simulate common weather scenarios in a behaviorally positive way. For instance, to simulate flying into inclement weather conditions and having to deviate to an alternate airport, have your student plot a cross-country flight at 2,500 feet above ground level or thereabouts. Then, when you're away from the congested airspace, inform the student that he's now flying into lowering cloud conditions and must deviate. Tell him that he'll have to lose 500 feet for every five minutes that passes as he plots his course to a new airport. There's a lot of room for creativity in terms of useful simulations to help students better understand the limitations of weather. Perhaps one of the most powerful forms of education that influences our beliefs and values is known as role modeling. If your students look up to you, as I know most do, then they want to become like you. So, while you have a whole bag of useful teaching tools, tricks, and techniques, don't forget to use the one that most influences your students. I'm speaking of your behavior around your students. Any opportunity for your student to see you behaving properly, making wise decisions, and properly evaluating risk are opportunities to influence your students positively for the rest of their flying careers. So don't pass up an opportunity to influence your student as a competent and capable role model.